Hello everybody, it's SID Matt Haven here today, and I have got something special for you. So, with the most recent implement to the game, with the True Vision Test, they have increased the camouflage factor of every single light tank in the game, and a couple of tank destroyers. Now, I believe this is just a little bit too much for the light tanks, as you're going to be seeing in these two recordings. And, well, you know what? <laughs> I, I cannot believe how well these two matches turned out. So, first things first, let's go ahead and jump into the first replay. Arctic Region. Now, this is a map that, well, they recently redid. And they added a lot more foliage to the map. They added a lot of things to this map. They, they redid some of the areas. So, the bottom right of the map there, around that corner, they made a lot more rocks and a lot more terrain. A lot, a lot more places to take cover. And then they added a secondary rock and foliage right next to it around J6. And then up at the top section, at the top left, around AB123, they changed everything. A lot more foliage, a lot more trees, and the new mechanics and new system. Just so far, so good. Now, <laughs> start of the match, I'm just goofing around, whatever. You know, just platooning up with some randoms on the uh, <laughs> clutch breaking on the club. So, clicking your middle button, you can go over, click start on the game. And from there, on Xbox One, keep in mind, you can go to official club. And once you're in official club, you can head over to multiplayer. And there's going to be groups looking for games. Now, if you're unaware that's there, you're welcome. It just helps you get in the matches and find a team to play with. Now, I'm taking the far left path, just because, teaming up with my guys, and we're just screwing around, enjoying the new true sight. I'm, I'm not a big fan of it, but at the same time, I am. I, I got like a 50-50 on it. The plus one, minus one, it, it's tier 10. You know, there's not really much to look at in tier 10, except for plus one, minus one just means you're going to be seeing more 10s. And I wasn't taking this game too serious to start off. And another thing, boom, right off the bat, I'm already showing off the camouflage. So, as I've mentioned in other videos, whenever you take a shot, you're going to appear. Now, there's one thing I'm going to be throwing out that I find to be just a little bit too much. In the T92 video, I mentioned camouflage rating. How, if you look at the map, you can see your tank and you can see your effective camouflage rating and you can see your view range. Thing is, where's my effective camouflage rating? It is so tiny that it barely appears on the map. Now, with the buff that they applied to light tanks, light tanks right now have a massive advantage inside these matches, especially if you know how to play your light tank. So, just going to throw this out there. You can actually make camouflage and ways to get covered. But with the True Vision rework for all the light tanks, the effectiveness of trees is just beyond what I was expecting. It, it was just ridiculous. Just I'm like, you know what? Let's just start knocking down trees. I want to be able to shoot this Andre. So risk it a little bit, driving out, getting back in cover. And... Just, wow, look at this. He, look at how far away we are. We're not even spotted. I'm just taking my time to line up shots. Hitting the ammo rack and just... Wow, I feel... <laughs> I felt pretty bad for this Andre. Speaking of which, there are two Andres that I feel bad for. One in this match and one in the next replay. So, True Vision... And the plus one, minus one, true vision. Um, I would like them to decrease the amount of distance that you can see out past. Because right now, there's just... A, you can see a little bit too far. If they were to drop it down to like 800 or 700 meters to the distance that the tanks will render in. I think that would help out a lot rather than spawning in and immediately seeing everybody. Plus, it'll be a little bit easier for older consoles who are having problems in the uh, matchmaking queue right now. So, the first generation Xbox One. 
I have a buddy that I play with that uses one of the first generations and he's been having issues loading in. He's getting hit with lag and a couple of other things, but you know, af after like an hour or so, it starts to clear up. Or a few minutes into a match, it clears up. Now, I'd like to see in the comments what you guys would like to see coming from me. I mean, yeah, the last video, tank reviews. Tank reviews are there. But I would like to know if you would like to see more replays with me doing a voiceover or if you would want to see tactics guides. I, I plan on doing a lot of those, but honestly, if I go over and I just do replay matches, I, I can get a lot more content out that way. Like, it, by that pace, you know, the amount of time I put in during a weekend, that could literally be two videos a day. But I don't want to make the same content over and over and over. So, you know, get an ace tanker in a tank, and it's like, alright, cool, I haven't done a review on this, so I'm going to throw that out there. And then, you know, take some of my best highlight matches and just go over, talk about it, and just have a... Just freaking... Dude, <laughs> True Vision right now, <laughs> light tanks. I am just, I I have no comment. These two matches happened almost back to back. It was I had this match, then I played in a medium, and honestly, I I deleted that recording because uh, well, I I kind of made a mistake right off the bat. And plus, it w wasn't too good of a match. I uh, <laughs> I drove off a rock and did a thousand damage to myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drive off rocks. It hurts. Now, just the content, you know, you don't see a lot of replays. You got Vinshaw. Vinshaw, by the way, check him out. A lot of the replays he posts. He doesn't do any commentary over them, but he is a good player. And if you want to learn weak spots or positioning in maps, he's a great, just great to follow. I'd say to check him out. Um, I will try and leave a link in the description for that. But I don't want to do it without his permission. So first things first, I'm going to have to talk to him and see if I can get a hold of him to be able to put his uh, info down. Because I just don't want to throw it up there and, you know, yeah, I just don't want to randomly pop up and be like, Hey, you know, I, you don't know me, but I know you. Using his likeness. that I don't want to get hit for that, you know. But so far, True Vision... Um, there is a lot of things about True Vision that I like and a lot of things about it I don't like. The fact that people are spotted out, out past 700 meters, so beyond the gun range, um, some people are taking advantage of that and they're hitting the 700 meter mark, taking a shot and then backing up. That way you can't fire back. Um, that's only happened a couple of times. It's not super common, but it can happen. And then artilleries right now, well, I don't know if they're still broken or not, but... I'll probably be checking that out later, and then I will leave a comment saying if they are or not. And by broken, I mean aim down sights, everyone appears for a split second, stop aiming, re-aim, they all appear for a split second, even though they are not spotted. A little bit of an advantage towards the artillery during the first event. I don't know if it's going on in the second, but yeah, that's something I'm going to check out. It's probably... Time to pull out a few derpy matches inside the T-92 anyway, so that has been gaining dust now for a few months. So, <laughs> look at that snapshot right on the move, and I, I don't know what's going on today. People, they it seems like they just can't aim, or I'm just driving extremely well. Yeah, It's one or the other. Hopefully it's my driving. And don't know how I whiffed that shot. <laughs> Just aiming right at him and the thing was like, yeah, we're, we're not aiming at him yet. We want to go far, far left. So, Arctic region. You know what? This map is just a great map. I, I love what they did to it. All the changes they applied is just... It, it's a fantastic map so far. It... Can't wait till they bring back Melanovka, the newer version. Everyone's getting sick of the winter. It's a little bit too cold in that map. So, alrighty, and here is the stat screen. So we made money at thirty thousand, eight thousand three hundred experience, and I believe no, that was not the day. That was a daily. That was the first match that we played in this tank today. 
We got a high caliber, a mastery badge, and the mark has gone up a little bit. 6,419 damage dealt. 27 shots, 23 direct hits, and 20 penetrations, with 3,000 spot assist as well. So, 9,000 damage accumulated in total. We punished the crap out of that chisel, and ooh, look, we bullied an Andre. Andre got bullied by a light tank. Now, on to the second match. This was on Praparovka. It took me a second to get the recording starting, so I didn't get the, you know, the load screen, which, eh... I, I, I might avoid those, or I might include them. It's up to you guys if you want to see the, the intro screens to know what map they're on and whatever, or I could just say what they are. So, as I said, now that it's a green background, you can actually see the camouflage safety net, that little barrier. It, it's just... It, it's almost auto-detect. Like, double the range of the auto-detect. It just... Light tanks right now, they are just almost unspottable up to like 150 meters to about 100 meters. They are right now dominating tier 10. So, you got a light tank and you want to go have fun and play around with it, just keep in mind, bushes, camouflage perks, muffled fire, is going to work the same way as it does with regular matchmaking. Just because your camouflage value is there, a gun is still a gun, and when firing it, you are going to lose your camouflage value. This bush in Proporovka, I, I like this bush a lot. Um, capable of pulling up to it. You don't have to go out too far of your way to get to it. And just able to kick back and just spot out anybody that's trying to come up. But so far, we're not seeing much activity. It's already a minute into the match, and we've only spotted a light tank. And a secondary spot of a medium, I believe it was. Now, Proporovka, they also redid this map. Arctic Region, Proporovka, El Haluf, and I believe that there's one more, and then Milanovka once they're done. El Haluf, what they did to that map, I gotta say, I'm having a blast with it. The, the whole new loadout, the texture and rocks difference, it's just looking really good. But I feel bad for a lot of the 360 players that, well, we left behind. But a lot of them have actually upgraded. I've ran into a couple of people who have said that they uh, came from the 360 less than a few months ago. So it's nice to see that people are getting back into the game. And another Andre the Giant that we are going to bully a little bit. It's kind of funny. I complain about that tank all the time. But right now during True Vision, it is at a massive disadvantage due to camouflage. Conqueror Gun Carriage. Spotting out still sitting at the base. First shell. And we hit the tracks. Absorption. And spotted out immediately. Probably by the Andre the Giant. Coming to a stop. Gonna slime on reverse. See if I can get another shell in. And 314. So, right here along this road. On Proporovka. For light tanks, this is a really good spot to start pushing up. Now, camouflage values are affected by bushes. There are three types of bushes. You have small, medium, large. Large bushes are going to have the greatest effect. Medium bushes, they're about 70% of the effect. Small bushes, they drop down to about 30% additional camouflage value. And the more bushes that you shoot through, the higher your camouflage rating. But from right there, even though we were shooting through a couple of bushes, we still got spotted out because we pulled up a little bit too far and the medium bush that was originally helping us stopped helping us because we went a little bit too far. Lining them up, that can be a little bit tedious at times, but you know what? doesn't matter because that poor little Andre didn't know what to do against us. He didn't want to turn around because we had a heavy, a tank destroyer, another heavy, a medium, and, well, pretty much four guns facing the front of them. If he would have turned his turret, it would have been a bad day. Now, when fighting a light tank, auto-locking is not going to be your best friend, especially whenever you're whiffing around. It's always best to try and free aim and lead your shot a tad bit. As you can see there, we tracked him. 
held him down for a second, and we did damage. He was driving in a straight line there, so we tried to take another pop shot, see if it would land, but with the dispersion values, we did miss. We are running vertical stabilizers, coated optics, and improved ventilation on this crew. We are also running a highly trained crew. I believe this crew has 17 perks. Now, I know that there's two tank destroyers right here. I don't want to pop this corner or go straight over the hill, but off in the distance there, we just saw artillery take a shot, and now we know our already's there. So, now we're just waiting. I, I don't know why these guys were being so aggressive. You know, they probably expected me to come over, and I'm just letting artillery take shots. I don't want to pop this hill. Just let them try to come over and wait for the team to fire. That's why I'm requesting fire as much as I can to let everybody else know. Backing up a tad bit to get a shot off, because he's coming right over, and there we go. For whatever reason, he thought he was going to get us, but nope. Exposes his side armor, and lower plate coming over a hill. Now here, Yagaru, that's going to hurt, so I went for a track, and somehow also went through the armor. I don't know where that shot ended up, going through the armor. So, I've... I gotta say, I was just <laughs> like, ooh, 266 damage. Nice. Now, <laughs> here's where the fun begins. I realized that there's a Fangula, a heavy tank. So, I'm trying to check the Yagaru, get him down to hold, hold that spot, act as cover. And then, as I looked at my map, I realized here comes the artillery. Now, there are three tanks aiming at me. And the artillery, I didn't mind getting in front of his gun because he doesn't have enough gun depression to aim down. Um, the only tank destroyers that have gun depression aimed down is the 5355, the 4043, I believe they have 5 degrees of gun depression or 3 degrees of gun depression. And right there, the Yagaru, that was not a ricochet, he actually bounced off of our gun. So, the shell that went through skid along our gun, it never hit us to begin with. It would have been an absorption, and right there, that was lag by the way. That was not fun lag either, that was just... Straight up, oh crap, hopefully I don't DC again, because that's happened to me twice tonight. And starting off, Jagdpanzer E100. The French Artillery, Tier 8, or is that, I believe that is the Tier 9, this is plus 1, minus 1. Jagdpanzer E100, and a Fangula. Now, right at the bat, Eagle Eye is picking up everything that he is doing. He did not repair his engine, he saved that repair kit to fix his ammo rack. So, in a situation of 4 on 1 to 3 on 1, all we did was just use everything to my advantage. Tracking, waiting for the team, but we racked up about 3,000 damage right there. So, using the Jagdpanzer E100 as a basically portable piece of cover, against the Fangula, and taking out the artillery as fast as we could, gave us another mastery for our second match inside this tank in this day. So, two matches, back to back. This match was equivalent to about 8,800 accumulated damage. So, this was within the span of three matches. The second match was... Uh, not exactly the greatest, but hey, <laughs> you know what? True Vision, it's not too bad. It could be better. Um, I think that the consistency for being able to see everybody is just not typically what you want to try and go for. There's not enough foliage in the map to provide cover for people for that. And the increased in light tank camouflage I, I i don't know i think it's a little bit too much because being able to come around a corner like that and just hide behind a bush and there's a guy sitting less than 150 meters away from you he can't even see you but you spotted out him because the light tanks and tank destroyers were the only tanks that they really screwed with for the camouflage rating so the strav which is in the swedish line here uh probably one of the next tier 10s i'm probably going to try out and grind 
it is sitting at a 0 0.61 stationary, which means if you're if you have a Strav 103B, right now would be the time to play it because if you have camouflage, muffled shot, and green thumb and what what the the last perk I I can't remember what it is, but you're you're never gonna get spotted, never. Not just that, the Strav's got crazy penetration. So, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to see me covering more replays, let me know. Hope you have a good morning, afternoon, or midday, whatever time it is for you. It's time for me to continue playing Zanks.